but but certainly it it is true it does it does work it has antiviral activity it is able to stop the coronavirus but with with some caveats hydroxychloroquine versus coronavirus the analysis of a real scientist mr reagan so it just so happens that my best friend from college is now an esteemed neuroscientist from the prestigious Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. His name is Dr. William Bookser, and his research experience happens to be particularly relevant to the current situation because Dr. Bookser has actually worked both with coronavirus in the lab and with hydroxychloroquine. Dr. Bookser, thank you for coming on my show. Thank you, Chris, for inviting me. Glad to be here. Okay, so right now there are several promising treatments for coronavirus. However, none has garnered as much controversy as hydroxychloroquine. This is because Donald Trump cited hydroxychloroquine as a potential treatment pretty early on March 19th. And journalists don't tend to like Donald Trump very much. And so the news media went into a bit of a frenzy claiming everything from Trump is giving people false hope to Trump has blood on his hands. And so this has become something of a fight. The news media want hydroxychloroquine to fail so that they can say Trump was wrong and conservatives want hydroxychloroquine to succeed so that we can say the media was wrong. What we really need and what we've really been lacking in this debate, I think, is actual researchers who have studied both coronavirus and hydroxychloroquine. We need these researchers to tell us if it is worthwhile to study this further. Now, before we get to the interview, um, I just want to say that Donald Trump earlier today announced that he himself is taking hydroxychloroquine. So let's take a look at that moment from the press conference. And a lot of good things have come out about the hydroxy. A lot of good things have come out. The frontline workers, many, many are taking it. I happen to be taking it. I happen to be taking it. Hydroxychloroquine? I'm taking it. Hydroxychloroquine. Right now, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I started taking it. Hey, people said, oh, maybe he owns the company. No, I don't know the company. You know what? I want the people of this nation to feel good. I don't want them being sick. And there's a very good chance that this has an impact, especially early on. I haven't taken that other than an original dose because the, all you need, you don't have to take it simultaneously, but the zinc you do take. So I'm taking the two, the zinc and the hydroxy. And all I can tell you is so far I seem to be okay. All right, now the science behind hydroxychloroquine in one moment, but first I have to sell you something. In the year 2020, it's so important to keep your body healthy. Collagen may be the closest thing we will ever have to a real fountain of youth. The older you are, in fact, the more likely it is that you've heard of the benefits of collagen. And for good reason. Many health experts now agree that consuming collagen is crucial to revitalizing how you look and feel. After all, collagen is the most abundant protein in your body, and it's the essential glue that holds you together. In fact, after age 20, people produce about 12% less collagen in their skin each decade. For some, it's an even greater decline. This means by the time you're middle-aged, you could be producing half of the collagen you did in your youth. Even worse, various lifestyle factors that you may have been exposed to, like poor diet, smoking, pollution, stress, and sun exposure, can deplete your collagen levels even faster. In short, this year-by-year -year escalating loss of collagen is a key reason that people look old as they age. Skin sags and wrinkles, hair gets thinner, nails lose their strength, joints become stiff, recovery from activity and exercise slows, digestion Digestion-related complaints seem to come out of nowhere, and in general, our bodies seem to turn on us. But collagen peptides have the following benefits. It makes your skin healthy and supple and gives you that youthful look. It makes hair healthy and young-looking, supports joint flexibility, strengthens nails, teeth, and gums, promotes strong, healthy muscles, tendons, and ligaments, promotes stronger bones, and it supports digestive health. And I actually looked into these claims because I will not advertise products that I don't believe have some benefit. And what I discovered was that these claims are all absolutely true. In fact, I recommend recommend looking this information up for yourself. Actually, you know, they didn't even send me any of this, but I'm going to actually order it myself because I actually think I probably need this. So visit my page at healthwithreagan.com and revitalize yourself with Biotrust Collagen Peptides. The link, as usual, is in the description below. So, Dr. Bookser, you've studied coronavirus. You understand the mechanisms behind how the virus works, and you've also studied hydroxychloroquine, and you understand many of the mechanisms behind how that works as well. So please explain how hydroxychloroquine might work against 
coronavirus? Okay, yeah. So like you said, I, I used hydroxychloroquine uh, frequently a few years ago when I was at uh, Pittsburgh. And what we used it for was to mess with a process called autophagy. So inside all of our cells, right, we, cells make stuff all the time. They're always consuming lots of different things. They're consuming oxygen. They're consuming sugars. And they're making stuff. They're making the building blocks that make our body work. But whenever you make stuff, you, of course, make, you have junk and you have to get rid of that junk. So the junk collection pathway, there's actually two different pathways, but the one that I, I care a lot about, which is called autophagy, basically it goes through this thing called the lysosome that you've heard of, right? So you get, you package up bits of junk that you find throughout the cell and you transport that like in this recycling truck back to the lysosome. And at the lysosome, it all gets broken down so that it can get reused to build more stuff. And so one of the things that people use chloroquine for, hydroxychloroquine, is to disrupt that process. Because what it does is that the, the lysosome, where you bring all of that material that you want to recycle, it has to have a very particular pH for everything to work correctly. And chloroquine gets itself in there and then screws up the pH. So basically what happens is that all of the, you know, the garbage trucks actually keep coming and trying to deliver material to the lysosome, but everything backs up there. Like it can't, it can't finish, it can't do its job. You're disrupting one part of the process and that destroys the whole process. Exactly. And that shuts down this whole recycling process. So in the setting of virus, there's at least two different things that theoretically um, chloroquine should be able to do. The main, kind of the main reason that people were interested in this is that basically one of the things that this particular virus does is it hitches a ride on intracellular uh, cargo, right? So inside the cell, there's always packages getting shuffled and moving around. And, and one of these packages is kind of like the recycling system that brings that garbage to the, to the, to the lysosome. And so the thought is, and, and there's some evidence for this, that if when you disrupt the lysosome and disrupt autophagy, if that were to stop all those kind of trucks coming into that garbage center, other trucks on other parts of other roads that the virus actually directly utilizes may also get kind of uh, stopped in the process. So it's like if you, if you basically, if you slow down the traffic everywhere, you'll slow down the traffic of the, of the basically the cars that the virus is hitching a ride on. And that will make it harder for the virus to get to the right spot in the cell that it needs to, to do more than just go inside the cell, right? Because if the virus just goes inside the cell, it really doesn't matter. Nothing's going to happen. But if it, it gets into the nucleus and starts to take over our cell and basically turn it into a virus-making machine, that's where the problem starts. So there's a few different ways that you might stop the virus from getting in and accomplishing that task. And one of them is to basically slow down the traffic or stop the traffic uh, along these pathways that the virus is known to use uh, to get into like the deeper parts of the cell, if you will. All right, so now the big question. Do you think this drug or this drug with zinc does work against coronavirus? So, I mean, there, there are now at least two papers that, have, that are really relatively recent that shows it works pretty well in cells, right? So like cells that have been taken out of a body. Um, but even there, it has a little bit of a limited utility. And, and just like you, you caught on to the fact that I said it's, it's very bioactive, it also means it's, it's very toxic. So in some of the cellular experiments, the dosing that they needed to use to get the antiviral activity, which was, which was very good antiviral activity, was really close to the dose that this drug is, becomes toxic. So, but there's, there is a sweet spot. There is a, a region where in cells, it actually works very well to, to stop the virus. And it is, it's close to where it becomes toxic to the cells, but the cells were able to survive. And so there's, there's this idea of this ratio and different drugs have different ratios of like, how high can you go on the dose and what's the toxicity? So we, we call this dose limiting toxicity, right? So there's many things that would work amazingly well. We could just up the dose twofold or tenfold, but then they would kill you. You know, another tricky thing about that is that's just in cells that are outside of the body and both being, you know, in the body could change it in both directions, right? So it could be the body helps us by metabolizing and making it a little weaker, or it could be the other way that it, it gives us side effects in the body, which we know about. There's, there's quite a few side effects. But, but certainly, it, 
it is true. It does, it does work. It has antiviral activity. It is able to stop the coronavirus, but with, with some caveats. Do you completely rule out the possibility that there is some mechanism that you're unaware of or that most researchers are unaware of that could be helping to combat coronavirus? Yeah, so in addition to the mechanisms that I said, which, which I think probably there, there is some effect, there, there could be others. Like, and we actually don't know all of its mechanisms of action. Um, this is a very bioactive chemical. And so I and others have done screens to look at like many, many different thousands of chemicals. And hydroxychloroquine always comes out because it's just, it's really active. It gets into the cell and it can mess with stuff. Uh, and so that's, that's cool. And so people have found really great use for it, for it, both in kind of autoimmune circumstances, as well as helping the body defend against parasites. So we, we actually don't fully understand how those things work, but it probably has to do with this ability for it to mess up the lysosome and mess up autophagy, right? Because if you're an immune cell, and you're overreactive in like an, an arthritic setting, and you're going around and this immune cell is causing inflammation, then it could be that that immune cell for some reason is more sensitive. It needs, it needs autophagy to help remove damaged things. And if you screw up its autophagy, if you screw up its lysosome with chloroquine, now it's not as inflammatory, right? It kind of forces it to chill out. But, but this is an interesting question for exactly that reason, because it could be that hydroxychloroquine has other um, bioactive properties that happen to actually work well for, the, uh, for this virus. It, it certainly is possible. All right. So this is something that the media keeps telling us that we should, you know, stop looking into hydroxychloroquine. It's been very politicized, which I think is is a problem. Uh, do you think that we should stop studying the effects of hydroxychloroquine on coronavirus? Is this a dead end? Should we stop focusing on this drug as a possible treatment altogether? No, I, I don't think so. And I'm, and I'm very glad that I think it's NIAID that's running this big uh, hydroxychloroquine trial. Um, I I I think anybody who thinks that something is going to work or not going to work without, you know, having a lot of the evidence is, is going to get surprised, right? So we know uh, remdesivir looks pretty good now from the clinical trial. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few other things that are being tried, but we, we don't have really solid data yet on hydroxychloroquine. And if, until we get it, you know, all the, all the naysayers could be surprised and maybe not, maybe it, maybe it won't work that well, but at least we have that option. We understand, you know, all the points around it. So there's no reason not to continue with it. It's not, again, it, it, it makes some sense. There, there is theoretical reasons. There is some evidence that it, it could work. So far, the, the data in humans is not terribly convincing for me and a lot of others, but uh, it, it's another tool that we can have in our toolbox. And yeah, we should definitely uh, know for sure exactly how it stacks up against the others. Okay, so one last question for you, because obviously, like I said, this is very heated debate, very politicized right now. There are people on both sides, very angry, uh, some about what the president said, and others are angry about how the media has uh, reacted to what he's said. But in general, if a public figure or an actor or a musician or a president in this case uh, mentions an early study indicating the potential benefits of a particular treatment of an illness, should the media feel free to attack this person and encourage the country to reject the potential benefit of the treatment because they dislike the public figure who happens to mention this treatment, in this case, the president. <laughs> well, of course not, right? I mean, that's, and hopefully the, like, the one thing that, that everybody can, can take from this is just when you, when you see studies that have data, don't, don't be scared of it, right? I mean, you guys all, everybody feels comfortable about looking at saying like, oh, what, what is the rate? How, how did people get better faster? Did less people die? And, and ask, you know, both, how did they do when they were on this, whatever drug it was, hydroxychloroquine or remdesivir, whatever. And, and how did the people that were um, not getting that drug do? And, and they can think about it for themselves and, and certainly don't let the, either the media or public figures who you may or may not like uh, be the sole factor for deciding. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bookser. Uh, you clearly know what you're talking about. And uh, I think that that was incredibly valuable information that I think is sorely lacking from the conversation um, around the nation right now. So thanks for coming on the show. And uh, thanks for being my best friend in college. <laughs> Chris, thanks very much for having me. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope that informed you a little bit uh, about hydroxychloroquine and coronavirus. Have a good night. Together. With God's help, 
we can and will resolve the problems which now confront us. And after all, why shouldn't we believe that? We are Americans. God bless you and thank you.